London, how you feeling? I said, London, how you feeling? Playing live makes me feel suspended from everything, really suspended from time, your cares, from your worries, from your stresses, everything. It's like this weird time capsule that kind of when you are in it and you're in it properly, nothing else really exists other than you, the stage and the people that are experiencing that with you. It's something deeper, it's for people and the people are as much part of the performance as you are performing, if that makes sense. We as people need the arts, we need something to kind of allow us to offload. You know, you need to be able to go into a club, into a theatre, into a... Whatever it is, and experience art, and it's meant to sort of take things off you. Yeah, the best word I could say is cathartic. It really does kind of just cleanse whatever is happening within you. Just love that feeling of like being awestruck. What was that tune they played that I've never heard of? Like that thing you get when you go in and you come out different. I, I think about my journey and the people that I've watched support my music and seeing them at festivals, seeing them at venues, in pubs, in wherever, you know, art brings people together. What can't be understated about touring as a musician, particularly with improvised music, it's like every gig you do, you're sharpening the iron. That's what was happening. Every show, it's kind of getting hotter and hotter. The crowds are loving it. We're getting better on stage. We get back to London, being the last show. We sound great, we feel great, the energy's great. The room is full. You know, I had a few friends come in as guests. So it was like, you know, it was special. My family were there, all of our peoples were there. You know, that's like always the difference between doing a tour and doing like a home gig. It's just like the energy cannot be like understated. It was definitely one of the best gigs we've done. And then I remember getting off the stage. One of the uh, venue techs, came up to me, he was like, yeah, that's it. So I thought he was talking about, you know, that's the last state of the talk. He's like, no, 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 that's it. Tomorrow's show is canceled. The government have just said we have to shut the venue down. It was just so <laughs> ominous at the time. I was like, wait, what? It was weird because it's like, I didn't go into the show thinking that would be my last show for a year and a half. Do you know what I mean? And then man, you know, it all stopped. It all, Seeing all of my community and my friends and my people that I know that were just about to either start their tour or plan a release or do things, seeing it like one by one just disappear. It was so, so heartbreaking to watch, you know, was seeing venues going bust, seeing artists just disappearing, seeing your friends take up new jobs just to survive. You know, it was a tough time, man, to just sort of see people's livelihoods on the line. You know, people that invested so much, man. You know, when music has never stopped, but then it stopped. <laughs> then what do you do when the music stops? And you know, I go and talk to people where they don't literally know when their next paycheck is coming in. And I'm not even now just talking in music, you know, I'm talking in just our communities particularly. And then on top of that, the added uh, health inequalities, what was going on politically, we had the whole George Floyd, movement that affected the world, which I'm glad people are sort of realising, but again, how many times do we have to be here? You know, and that's happening in the backdrop of like, figuring out what this new ecosystem is for a creative. I know how much I value art and what it does for me, but for here in the UK, just so stark in your face, just to be like, we don't value the arts, we're not supporting it, it's not a real job, go and retrain. <laughs> I'm thinking of all the things that came back, your job might be in tech, but you just don't know it. That sort of, you know, all of that stuff that was happening. But the hypocrisy on the other side is like, everyone's at home consuming more art than they probably ever have. I'm not saying it's only the creatives that were going through this for sure. In many other fields, there was a bit more stability, whereas us, people are still figuring it out, man. Not being able to share music live definitely had a big effect on the musical community. For one day for that just to be stopped, I think, affected a lot of people, people's mental health, whether they knew it or not, just being able to go out. Humans need that social interaction and it was taken from us so abruptly. This sort of reset forced people to really value what maybe you had taken for granted, really. I 
I miss the, the community aspect of music the most. Those community ties that I didn't realise was so fun and vital and important to me prior to things stopping. That, you know, whether you're backstage or you run into a fan that's like an avid collector and starts talking to you about records that you didn't know about and is completely schooling you. I'm very sociable and I love that aspect and I didn't think it was as important to me as it was. When you're kind of in the circuit touring, you don't often get to see what your friend's show looks or sounds like. So just seeing everyone was a plus anyway, you know, just hanging backstage and, oh, there's this person, oh, there's that person I haven't seen in so long. It's like, oh no, they're, they're here to play and we're here to see and hear each other's music and see how it's even developed in this period, you know, just seeing how people are that much more hungry to perform and everybody was definitely just like match fit. <laughs> which was really cool to see. Performing is just one of those muscles you just have to keep in check. Physically, as a musician, it was demanding to go from zero to 100. Nothing can really replace the energy and the power that a live performance requires. Beautiful, beautiful coming back and just seeing everyone celebrating. It was just like this unspoken unification of everyone. It's like we've all been through the same thing. And now, we're free again. It was definitely sort of beautiful feeling that, just feeling that sort of unspoken. We're really ecstatic and happy and grateful just to be here with each other. You know, can't, can't really put into words. No person is an island. We need each other to, to survive, to thrive, to, to share, to exchange. That's what makes us unique, what makes us colorful and exciting and happy and all of those beautiful things we need to get through each day. Remember and let us never forget that in addition to the NHS and the brilliant work they did, it was art that kept the world sane. <laughs> this period has taught us we should continue to ask more questions, to not be too comfortable. You know, look at our imprint. You should always be looking out for each other and being open, open to change and open to questioning why we're doing things. And, openly keeping that dialogue, constantly evaluating how do we best move forward in any industry. Quinn Alton on the saxophone, Renato Paris on the keys, Artie Zeitz on the guitar, my name is Moses Boy, thank you, peace.